and welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael DeLon, and today I'm talking with Ryan Sullivan. Ryan, thanks for uh, squeezing me into your schedule, man. Michael, thank you so much for having me, man. I'm excited. It's going to be a great conversation. So Ryan is, well, he's the the podcast wedding planner. And we're going to unpack that because that's really, really cool what he does. He's got a, an extensive background doing lots of things. So I'm just going to let him tell you versus me telling that. So Ryan, as we jump into this thing, how in the world did you get to doing what you're doing? Yeah, thanks for asking. And also, yeah, I'm excited to dive into that. But yeah, I'll give you the context first quickly, because I think a lot of guests get in that and, <laughs> and then we we don't get out. We don't know where we're at. So, um, what, man, I used to be a mechanic, right? Like this is literally how I start um, all of these podcasts is telling people that, you know, I, I used to, I worked a regular blue collar job um, and I started that in high school. And at the same time, um, I had aspirations, right, uh, to to do bigger things. I was interested in Gary Vee, interested in entrepreneurship. In my generation, it's a lot of like side hustle. It's a lot of like, you know, drop shipping, stuff like that. But that didn't appeal to me. But I knew I was like, I want to just do something, right? And so mm -hmm. um, this is going to come back around. But I was actually a DJ in high school. Um, a friend of mine didn't have a driver's license. So he was like, you drive and you MC. <laughs> And I'll bring the equipment and we'll DJ. And we were 17 and he was, I was 17 and he was 15. Okay. So that was our first business. Um, and I did other, you know, little businesses sure. in high school too. But anyway, so coming back up to him, man. Yeah, I was a mechanic. I had made a decision. Do I want to go to college? Take this $20,000 that I saved. Do I want to go to college? Or do I want to start my own mechanic shop? Because the guy I was working for had a shop down the road that I could have, um, you know, rented out and started my own thing. And I think I was 20 or 19. 1920 ish sure. uh yeah man so and i was like you know what i'm gonna go to college uh and i'm a rapper music producer i do that too so um i'm like you know i think college is gonna be better for me to like find connections and i just didn't see myself as a mechanic but i always had the skill so fast forward man got freelance jobs in college tried freelancing for three months made 80 dollars in three months and i was like this is for me it's working um free internships like i've just done all the things yeah. that people do um, to just keep kind of leveling up their skills. Right. And that's kind of how I, I landed on podcasting through my own podcast. So that's the winding road. I've done every job from, you know, I've been a, a flag guy at a horse polo, yeah. uh, track, you know, I mean, you name it, dude, I have done it all. And now kind of like awesome. done it all, done anything, everything you can do from zero to 24 years old, but that's awesome. That is, that is very cool. Well, let, let's unpack this, the podcast, because you help business owners create a podcast, launch a podcast and, and all of that, but you've kind of positioned yourself as this, this podcast wedding planner. So um, mm. unpack that because I think we all know kind of what a wedding planner is, but talk about how that relates and where in the world did that come from and your background. Yeah. So like I said, I started DJing in high school um, and then I basically like just stopped doing it. Like my friend was going to try to become a doctor and we just kind of, our paths went different ways. And so in that time, um, like really like leading up to that, I once I got into college, I'm like, I'm going to need a job. I'm going to need some kind of side job. Once again, don't want to continue to be a mechanic. So I apply for a DJ company. I apply there in September. They email me back in January. They're like, I'd like for you to come into an interview. Thank God I checked my email because I never checked my, I wasn't addicted to email like right. I am now. And yeah. so I checked it. I went in. I was like, hey, I have a little bit of experience. They hired me on the spot. And now I've been working with that company for probably almost four going on five years now. So they trained me on how to DJ weddings. So I'm a wedding MC, wedding DJ. And the other day I was commenting, you know, as I do, I have this kind of LinkedIn comment marketing strategy that I use. And I was commenting and I just made this comment of like, oh, we're like wedding planners, but for your podcast. And in, in, plan, in helping to plan and organize so many weddings, it actually really is that. And I do struggle because podcast coach is not a term that people are used to. They right. they don't even know that's real, right? They don't right. even know that's a thing. That's like saying I'm a fast food coach, right? Or something right. like that. Like it, it's just it's just not common uh, nomenclature, you know? So yeah, man, I just came up with that the other day and I'm I'm proud of it. So I appreciate you uh, yeah. pointing that out. Yeah. I think it's great because everybody knows what a wedding planner does for a wedding, but not every wedding has a wedding planner. And I think the same thing could be tr said about podcasting because, I mean, I, I started my podcast all by myself a number of years ago. Yep. But at the same time, there's a lot of complexities. There are some uh, variances that, that a wedding planner, a, a podcast planner could really help with. So let's unpack a little yeah. bit about how do you take a business owner who's thinking about this world of podcasting? What is it? How do you do it? And how do you guide them and help them? 
Sure. Yeah. So I'm going to start with you as an example. Um, sure. I think you have a great personality for this and I don't know okay. you too well. I've just lit, watched your podcast, right. listened to them. Now I'm talking to you. I think you kind of have a natural curiosity um, mm -hmm. in people. So I think that there's some people, there's really two types of people that I see. You could call it introvert, extrovert, whatever. But if we're going to talk podcasting, we got to talk people first, right? So maybe the extrovert, they are around people and people give them energy. Right. And then you have the introvert, they're around people. And after a certain point, people drain their energy, right? Yes. So you don't want to be in an energy draining scenario. Nobody does. Right. So some people I truly think are not meant for the medium. I think mm -hmm. maybe they should do go paperback route. Maybe they should write That's a book. Right. Maybe they should start a blog. Maybe they should just do a newsletter. Maybe they should post on a text based social media platform like LinkedIn. I'm not sure. But Really where I start is I sit down, like I was talking to a CFO today who's leaving her job as a CFO, right? She wants to start a business and start a podcast. And the first thing I ask is, what's your top of funnel strategy, right? What is your marketing strategy to reach thousands of people? And then those thousands become hundreds and then the hundreds go down to the tens and then the tens are the ones who listen to your podcast. And she didn't know, right? She just said, well, I'm just going to use social media. Use social media as the broadest. That's like the worst thing you could say because that doesn't actually mean anything, right? So I start with why do we need a podcast? Like I'm mm -hmm. almost, I'm not trying to convince you not to start one, but I really want to have some great reasons why. Because as you know, in doing it, it takes a ton of time, money, energy, resources, whatever you want to do. You could spend a lot of money on it or you could spend right. a lot of time on it. It's whichever one you want, right? But That's somebody's going to be doing that work at the end of the day. So I start there. Why do we need it? What's our why? right? Are we in a position in business where we need this podcast to get us 10 leads a week or we're screwed? Or are we in a position in business where it's literally just a branding play and we could dump 100k a year in it, into it and not even look, right? So right. yeah, I, I always start there. That's good. That, and that's a really good place to start because you know my audience understands me enough to know I'm always strategy first. Because all, all the marketing channels, and that's all podcasting is, is a channel, they all work when done properly. Mm -hmm. Just like, I mean, Gary Vee did YouTube, right? And other people do TikTok and think they they all work. The question is, what are you trying to make happen, and what do you have to work with, and what makes the most sense? Yes. So I love that you that you start there. So let let's go back. Somebody you talk with them, and and you together you say, yeah, podcasting might be a pretty cool thing. Mm -hmm. How in the world do you help somebody go from there to actually getting one created uh, using your your white glove approach, as you say on your LinkedIn? And as this podcast wedding plan, what, what are some of the things that you're taking a business owner through in their mind and, and content wise and all of that? Yeah. So first we're going to decide once we figured out like, okay, the podcast is right. Okay. We know it's going to be a podcast yeah. and, and maybe it'll be just a YouTube channel and a video show. That's fine too. We can do that. Yeah. Um, and we're still going to help with that. But if, once we made that decision, now we know, okay, now, how do we want to launch it, right? And, and we have three options, design, build, and grow. Those are the three options, and they're just based on that outcome, right? So the first one is a podcast coach, right? Podcast consultant. Um, my partner runs half of the business. He does the consulting and, and the production, and then I do the sales and marketing. So I'm the mm -hmm. founder, and then, and then he runs that stuff. So if you were to, to, to do the design uh, version of the launch, we would just be – going through our podcast launch system, right? So it's five calls. It's basically the wedding planner for your podcast. You're sitting down with that wedding planner and they're going through, are you going to have a bouquet toss? Are you going to have a garter toss? How many people are going to be there? What's the food looking like? What time is it coming out? It's the same thing for podcasts. What's the vibe? What's the angle? Who's the audience, right? What's our unique positioning? Are there a hundred podcasts with the same name? Well, we're going to have to, we're going to have to do that's something right. about that. Right. So that's really what the podcast launch system, um, and it's called the podcast launch accelerator. Um, it, and that's our design podcast design system. It's five calls includes an intro an outro and your graphic design. So it's hmm. basically just, Hey, I might DIY this later. I might DIY some stuff. I might pay for other, other people to do other things, but I need this help right now to help design it and have a system. Like you said, strategy first, where right. the first call with us is not what microphone to use. The first call with us is who are we talking to and why right. and why should they, they care, right? So that's just the, I guess, yeah, basically the wedding planning, but for your podcast, that's the description of that. And then from there, the bigger packages are, you know, everything from monthly production to flying out to your business to, to, to set up a, you know, studio in your office, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot to it. And I love that you start there and you have these three, what'd you say, design, build, and launch. And that's really good because now a business owner can say, wow, all right, maybe I just start with design. And then when you're done that, it's like, 
okay, well, let's build this thing. And that would be engaging you at a different level. Wow. Okay. Let's go to the other way. Or you mm -hmm. might have somebody who's been thinking about this. They've got the budget. They're like, dude, I'm ready to go. Yes. Let's jump in. Yeah. That, and that's where the three I, that's, and I honestly, like I've been changing this for the past three or four years, ever since we designed the system, like we took somebody through, we took a real estate investor through this system. He was the first one. And I was like, all right, man, like, just like bear with us. And he loved it. And he ended up podcasting for a while. And he only left podcasting because he bought a storage facility. Like he was only just like successful enough where he's like, I don't even have time to do this right yeah. now, you know, but so we've been iterating on it and that's why it's, so the design build and grow, the design is we're going to do it with you to help design it. The second one is we're actually going to help you design it and build it with you. And then the growth is we're going to design it, produce it, manage it and market it. Right. Okay. So it's just an intern. It's just, how high a touch do you want, basically? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good because different business owners come in at different places. They may have a whole marketing team behind them and all that, and they don't need the grow aspect, but they don't have the podcast. And they're not, well, what is this animal? And how best do I do it? And what do we talk about? And all of that. And that's where they would come in, maybe to the design build aspect or something. Uh, because there, there's a lot to it when you think about the technical aspects. It's not rocket science, but there is some things that you, you need to do to do it well. Yeah, that's what I say every day, literally. It's, it's not rocket science, but it's complex. And that's yeah. the thing with like, I was talking, like I said, I was talking to that CFO today. With with podcasting, I like to use examples because the answer is mostly always it depends. Right. But I'm talking to her and I'm like, sure, you could talk about finance on a podcast, but it's not, you could simplify it, but it doesn't make it simple. Right. And so that's the thing with, with podcasting. You actually might be a business owner and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so uh, I, I'm spending thousands just to design it. Now I'm going to hire you guys to coach me through it. That's all great. But I don't even know what a podcast is. I don't even know why I would even get into podcasting. In that case, you might want to hit me up and be on my show. You might want to hit Michael up and apply for his show. You might want to start as a guest, right? You're probably going to listen to some podcasts first, then start as a guest, get your feet wet, then maybe eventually, if the stars align, um, you know, think about doing your own. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. And I love what you just said there about listening to other podcasts because you'll get a vibe. You'll say, oh, I like that or no, I don't like that. And do I do it myself or do I interview people? I mean, I love podcasting because I just get to bring Ryan on and talk to him and ask a question. And you just go and and I meet great people. I learn lots of things, but I've, I've listened to other podcasts. I was just listening to one. The lady's a bookkeeper for, for business owners, mm -hmm. super knowledgeable. And she's you know unpacking, how do you understand a balance sheet as a business owner? And I'm like, wow. Now, I've got to go back and re-listen to that, but that's the beauty of podcasting. Yep. Is she can put that now. Guess what? After that, I'm going to go to her website. I'm going to watch her YouTube. Mm -hmm. She's engaging me on a topic that I have interest in. I'm not ready to hire her yet, yep. but I'm I'm moving along the pathway. And that's one aspect of a podcast. She mm -hmm. and I do podcasts totally differently. And that's the beauty, I think, of the medium yep. is going back to the strategy of A, is is podcasting the right one? And B. What's your vibe? What are you trying to do here? And how, how's your audience going to engage with it? Yeah, that's it. And yeah, exactly. And also, I yeah, I'm in the same boat. I have two, right? I have a podcast that's a conversational, mostly in-person interview show that's pretty localized, you know? And then I have a monthly newsletter that's just once per month where it's just one video that accompanies the newsletter. Yeah. And they both do different things for me. Like yeah. one is more ROI based. The other one's more a passion project. It's okay. I still do both of them. Right. But yeah. yeah, it's, I think a lot of times, like what I have seen is that it's hard for people to make decisions around this. Yeah. It's hard to make decisions in business. Right. But the fundamentals of podcasting are the fundamentals of business. It's just the yeah. same thing. It's just replace product with media, replace product with podcast. There you go. Right. Like it's, right. it's, 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 there's so much, there's so many different ways to skin the cat. Um, they, they really are. And, and in business, my audience listen, hears me say this all the time. We all need coaches, right. Or wedding oh, yeah. planners, podcast planners, because we are so close to our business. So Ryan, yeah, we don't know each other. Well, I'm a marketing strategist, been doing this for, for 11 or 12 years. I've got three marketing coaches that look into my business because I'm so close to my business. It's hard for me to see it the way my audience does. Mm -hmm. And just like in podcasting, business owners need somebody like Ryan to come to the table, even if, if it's that beginning design stage. Hire him for the, those five calls and, and get that done. Get your bumpers, get your logos, and have some strategy and a plan to go, okay, now what would be our next step? All right, you, he, he can help you with that. Is, that. is that kind of the process of the thinking that a, a business owner could go through? 
Yeah. And I mean, I'll say for myself, like I just got a business coach for the first time, business slash life coach. He does a little bit of both. Um, everybody does it differently too. Yeah. Every coach does it differently. Every coach is different. Right. So you can't even say like, yeah, get a business coach. Well, what does that mean? What are they actually doing for you? Right. This year I've known this guy for five years. Yeah. It took, he's been on my podcast like three times, like, yeah. but it wasn't until last year where I actually said to him, we did another hour call. He he's, he does his follow-ups, right? We did the another hour call and I'm like, no, I actually want to move forward with this now, right? Once I did that, my mind changed and I went, oh, this is coaching, right? Like coaching does that. It does that expanded view. It allows you to see it. Um, but back and back to your question though. Yeah. So we don't just do this for people who launch, who want to launch. We do this for current podcasters too. Mm. And so I think that's where our coaching really shines. Like we have a, a monthly coaching program. That's just like a yearly contract, right? You yeah. just commit for the year and it's one hour per month that like, I have a show on there. That's basically like, like me just talking to these guys for one hour per month. And we just, we just realign. Like we just go, all right, how did that go? How did this go? Did this work? And we just sit there just same as your marketing guys do for you. And, and just that accountability side, I think is a game changer, but listen, I wouldn't expect anybody to do it if I didn't have them. Right. Like I have a bodybuilder. I'm not a bodybuilder, but the guy I get my workouts from is right. If yeah. He's a bodybuilder. So, you know, it's like, you don't need to be the bodybuilder, but it's like, you probably want to have some kind of expert there to, you know, just guide you and maybe give you that, give you some tips. And to be honest, like, you don't even need to give me money. Like if you sit down with me for 30 minutes, like I start my coaching at, at, at the first second of yeah. the call, right? Like I treat all calls. Like I might not see this person ever again, might not talk to them again. Like just want to give value there. Like, even if you sit down with any podcast coach, if you sit down with Michael and ask him about podcasting for 30 minutes, right. On just a casual call, that's even, that's coaching right there. Right. So right. I think it's the mindset. It's not even that you need to like pay. You just need to start getting information from like a few people who are where you want to be, you know? And I think that's, that's the beauty of the coaching, you know? Yeah. I, I think, and that's, that's so well said right there. And the thing you said about the mindset shifting when you hired the coach, I think that's 90% of the battles is shifting oh, yeah. your mindset and, and hiring somebody who's down the road from you a little bit. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. Cause if you are like, Oh yeah, like I'm going to, I mean, we see it all the time with course creators and stuff. People will spend 12 grand on a course and not even open the course. That's right. right? It's like, what? <laughs> like if Crazy. I had that 12 grand right now, what I do for that, that, you know, it's like, it's yeah. a, <laughs> like you think in your mind, you're like, if I had that, I would do this and that, or I would be the best student in that course or whatever. Right. So I'm not saying we're all, everybody listening is out there spending tens of right. thousands of dollars of, on courses they're not doing, but um, for sure there's, you look at it, it's like, okay, even to, I don't even care, whatever your budget, man, like I'll talk, I'll do a coaching call with you for five minutes. Is that your budget? Like, I'm good. It doesn't need to be this whole entire package even. Yeah. Right. Like, like you're alluding to, it's really like the mindset and wanting the help right? and knowing that, Hey, if I don't see this $500 in three and a half weeks, it's okay. Like okay. I got the new information, you know? That's right. Yeah. And, and when you get that new information, it takes you to a new level of your thinking and the rest is history. Your business goes to a new level. So, um, Right. So where, how do people get a hold of you, Ryan? If there's, I, I know my audience has lots of people who've thought about podcasting. I talk about it all the time and you offer a, a really unique service and a way of doing it around the, I still love the, the podcast wedding plan. I love that. Whole I'm concept. really glad that this is resonating because I'm, I really love that description. So. I think it's That's great. Funny. I think it's great. So uh, how do people get a hold yeah. of you? Yeah. So I'll say like LinkedIn is it for me. So if you use it, that's my social media platform of choice. I'm on there every single day, five or six okay. days a week because I've grown a following on there and that's where I've been for years. So if you want to connect with me there, that's where you're going to get the most value for me in terms of every single day I just post about podcasting. Like yeah. I just try to give away as much value as possible. Um, Ryan at podcastprinciples.com is my email. I got inbox zero. I did that this year with my coach, you know, <laughs> no, no yeah. one reads, right? So right. Um, I'm super active on there as well. I would give you podcastprinciples.com too, but it's under construction. We we're rebuilding it right now. So if you want to head over there, you might still be able to join the email list through that. But between the LinkedIn email, um, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm a rapper too. So I release music. I perform live. I'm a DJ. Cool. I do a lot of stuff. So that's all at sullybop.com. So that's S U L O Y B O P. But between any of those go Google podcast principles, Google Sully Bop, you're going to, you're going to look it up. And if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see it behind me too. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'll make sure to capture those, put that in the show notes. And um, Ryan, this has been phenomenal. 
And um, you're the first wedding planner I've ever had on my on my podcast. <laughs> you just happened to do it for podcasts. I love that. There you so, go, man. Yeah, if you need a, a wedding DJ in the uh, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, New York tri-state, man, I'll give a plug to uh, Star Shield Entertainment, man. They, uh, I wouldn't have came up with that uh, that slogan without them, man. So, and and this flew by, man. Really appreciate you doing this. I love the energy. You're welcome, brother. Take care. You too.